guys, I hope you're doing well today. I'm actually going to take some time today and go through a quick do-it-yourself project for those of you that are interested. Today I'm just in scrubby clothes and I'm going to be getting down and doing my own um, do-it-yourself batten board project. I'm going to show you the before and then I'm going to show you exactly how we do the batten board and what it's going to look like after. Right along here I already have kind of like a decorative baseboard that runs around the length of the room but as you can see the walls past a certain level are bare. You'll be able to see such a big difference whenever we do an overview of the entire room. Alright, let's head to the other room and take a look at what we will need to complete this project. You'll need some type of level. This is actually a laser level but a regular standard long level will work as well. You'll need painters tape. You'll need a brush for your walls. If you have a small space to paint, um, I recommend going with maybe a six inch brush, which is what I have here, and a six inch disposable tray. You will also need liquid nails or some type of wood adhesive, and you'll need a fast dry caulk. This one is DAP, and this is Alex Fast Dry, and it's a fast dry acrylic latex caulk plus silicone. It's mildew resistant, and I selected that simply because this is gonna be going in the bathroom. You'll need to choose your paint. I don't have a huge area to paint, so I went with the Valspar in satin finish. I do like the interior satin finish paints for the bathroom because the walls tend to be humid. You'll need your wood. Um, the one by fours are gonna be the top board, the part that runs along the wall. And the smaller individual sections are actually gonna be your one by twos, and I'll get into that once we get into the actual um, putting it on the walls and marking it. So those are all pre-cut. I had them cut at Lowe's Home Improvement Store, but one thing that's important to note, they can only cut to a certain length. And after that, you'll have to take the smaller pieces and cut them yourself down to the smaller sizes, especially if you have some odd wall sizes like five inches or six inches that you'll need. So for that, you'll wanna pick up a miter box that comes with a saw. This is actually a kit. This is by Task Force. This is a 12 inch miter box with a 14 inch back saw. And this actually will help you make the cuts in the angles and the only reason why I really need this is to make the smaller cuts on the boards I won't actually this is a non miter project unless you plan to miter the edges in order to not have to remove your decorative baseboard which I'll explain to you'll need a putty knife and some um, I guess spackling this is quick dry and you'll need a tape measure of course some type of sanding block to smooth down the wood edges and to smooth down the walls I have water because you're going to need something to drink. You'll also need a brad nailer. This is the Porter cable. It's just a brad nailer. And here is the actual um, air compressor unit that runs the brad nailer. Now if you don't have access to a brad nailer and brads, you can actually buy small gauge brads and you can hammer them in and use a little awl punch to hammer them the rest of the way. It goes pretty quickly because most of your drywall doesn't have studs in it and if you're actually spacing it 16 inches apart, if you do it on a stud, then I would probably recommend maybe using a small screw to keep them from backing out. But again, by using the liquid nails and um, a combination of that and the brads, you won't have any problems with your wood coming out as long as you seal the edges with your caulk. Alright guys, I'm back in the bathroom and the first thing that we're going to be doing to complete the project and probably the most important step in getting a smooth, even finish for your batten board base, which is going to be your wall. We're not actually going to use a particle board behind. This is going to be kind of the easiest way to do it um, and the quickest way that also looks nice. You're going to want to take a drywall sanding block or any type of sandpaper and if you notice that you have any uneven surfaces in your paint, uh, maybe bubbles or maybe if you happen to have like some fuzz or hair painted into it, you're actually going to want to sand the surface below where your batten board's going to be. So you've already kind of got an idea of where your batten board's going to run, but you're going to want to just kind of smooth out the wall and kind of sand down any imperfections so that you have a smooth, even surface when you go to paint it. Any type of dust or residue from sanding, you're just going to want to get that off of there and also anything that may have fallen down to your baseboards. So you're just going to dust off the areas that you just sanded. You're going to do that all the way around the room. I'm going to be taking this laser level and I'm going to be bouncing a beam of light around so I can kind of figure out where I want the paint to go. Alright, the nice thing about a laser level is it wraps corners and I think you can see it right around here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pen and I'm just going to give myself a few anchor points to determine 
where my tape will go. Next up is going to be to start applying the tape. That way we'll know where we're going to be painting around the room. Alright guys, I'm actually about to begin painting. I have my 6 inch roller and I have my 6 inch disposable um, paint pan. I'm going to be using this small roller simply because it's going to get around the edges and the fixtures, the toilet, and help me cut in really close to things without having to kind of go over too far. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and roll this out and I'll go all the way around the perimeter and I'm actually also going to use a paintbrush and paint my baseboard as well. I'm going to be leaving my baseboard intact. I'm not going to be pulling up my baseboard because I do like the type of woodwork it is and there are workarounds for using your existing baseboard without having to tear it up and replace it. Another thing I wanted you to be able to see really quickly is another reason why I prefer using the six inch brush. If you'll look back here at this corner, I'm I'm able to actually work right up behind the toilet as I am um, painting and I'm also able to work right into the corners without any problems. So I think this is really nice, especially if you're not able to take out or you're not comfortable with removing your toilet tanks, especially if you're doing this in a bathroom or if there's any kind of hard to reach areas that you're just not comfortable rolling around. This tiny little six inch roller really gives you the maneuverability to be able to paint around these tight, hard to reach spaces. And I think you can see behind me, I've actually already laid down my initial top coat, or I call this kind of like the primer coat. I'm gonna be following up and painting it a second time to get that bright white effect for the batten board. But right now, for now, I've laid this down just so that I know there is a solid level coating behind the woodwork that I'm going to be placing on the wall so there's no awkward shadows or any places where maybe the, the old paint shows through so that's kind of what the primer takes care of. Now this is actually going to need to take the time to dry. I am back and I'm going to be putting in the top or the main section of the batten board along the top. Now you do have an option to add an additional decorative trim but I feel like because this is so thick um, it's about an inch thick, but this is going to give me a sufficient ledge and I don't really want an overhang for my wall considering this is my bathroom and it's just going to be like an additional thing I'll have to dust or clean. So I'm going to leave the ledge off because I just want to keep it simple and clean and pretty much as refined as I can. But one tip I would like to give you is before you actually place your boards onto the wall, you may want to go ahead and take the opportunity to paint the edge of the board and um, this is going to be the edge that goes up and just kind of, because the board is kind of slightly beveled, they're never 100% square, they're slightly beveled from the trim, just go ahead and paint your coat of paint, your white paint, over the top of the length of that board and you'll find that it'll be so much easier when you go to put your final coat of paint on it. Um, you could pre-paint all of this I suppose, but then you'd have to wait for it all to dry together. I think it's so much easier to just let it dry when it's on the wall. So I generally wait to paint the entire finished project um, again whenever the paint is on the wall. And of course you'll have to darken this up a little bit. But by painting this ledge you're going to save yourself a lot of time and hassle trying to cut in around the edge of this once it's up on the wall. And now I'm going to show you what I meant by going through and leveling out your board. This is the liquid nails and this is the back of the board. This is going to be the top. I've kind of tried to pick the smoothest side of the wood, the side that would need to have the least amount of touch-ups, like with spackling or whatever you choose to use. I'm just going to run a very thin bead of liquid nails. Um, I try to do a little bit more around the edges, and it doesn't have to be anything fancy. This is just going to be kind of an extra adhesive to help it stay on the wall. I'm going to take my board, my top board, and I'm actually going to rust it on both of those just so I'm kind of sure that it's good and snug. I'm going to take my level and it should be right on because I did already measure this out and you can look if you were to see this with the level you can tell that it's perfectly straight. So with that I'm going to actually push my liquid nails onto the wall. I've got these two boards on the ends that are kind of helping it rest in place. It's going to get a little bit noisy but I'm going to grab the brad nailer and I'm actually going to put a couple of brad nails into the wall and I am going to try to locate a stud as well, but I'm going to take this in the meantime and I'm going to try and drive a couple of brads in just to hold it into place. My board is nice and level with the boards that are go going to go underneath and it's nice and secure between the liquid nails and that. Alright guys, this is an extra step that I sort of find is kind of useful to help give you an extra added bit of um, stability and uh, durability on your back 
piece, the, the piece that's going to become the top ledge of your batten board, um, take and grab a stud finder or, you know, the old-fashioned kind of knock and locate method and grab something to write with. And we're going to locate at least one or two studs along the length of this. Studs run about every 16 inches. That's important to know. That's also usually every place that most people place their 1x2s when they go to do their batten board, but it all depends on where you want your actual um, vertical lines to fall. Some people do 14 inches, some people do 13. It's all a matter of personal preference. Alright, so here we are right here. We're, let me double check it again. Okay, I'm showing an alert that it looks like we have a stud right about here, so I'm going to mark here. And I'm guessing, if I had to guess, that's probably going to be about 16 inches. I'm going to keep running. Alright, it looks like I have a stud right here. So I have two good studs. I have grabbed some self-tapping screws. They're the ones that have kind of points on the end. It makes it easier to grab the wood and go into the wall. And I'm going to be taking a drill. And I'm going to just drive one of these into the stud in the wall just for some extra added support. One thing you'll want to do when you're done is just grab a manual screwdriver and kind of hand tighten down and that helps you get a nice kind of sunk, sunken finish that's really easy to cover. So now I know this is not going anywhere. It's really sturdy and it's stuck in the wall and I'm going to do the same thing again on this second stud right here. Another thing I want to show you too is on the corners, you don't have to worry about miters. Um, you don't have to make miter cuts or anything having to do with miter edging because of the fact that you can basically bite your boards up together evenly and you're going to be using um, caulking and spackling to fill the gaps between the two and it'll look like a straight line. Uh, so basically you consider when you're making your measurements to subtract an inch on one of the two pieces and you're actually going to do that to allow the boards to go side by side so you don't have to worry about making miter cuts. Another very real problem that you may run into is uneven walls. You can see the gap that I have between the wall. A lot of times, unfortunately this is the case, houses, whether they're old or brand new, our house is actually pretty new. It was built within the last 10 years. Um, but some of the walls are very uneven and we notice that as we've begun projects around the house. But what we'll do is we'll get it as close to the wall as we can possibly get it and then we'll fill that difference with the caulking and um, smooth that out so that way there's a nice smooth line along that ledge. Now you can see that I have the top board completed. I've got a little coat of primer on it just to kind of help me visualize how it looks level. And what you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to use a sanding block and you're just going to run over the smooth surface of it, try and smooth it out as best as you can and then you're going to go along with your lightweight spackling and if you have, and you could probably use like caulking too if you wanted to, but I kind of like to use the lightweight spackling to help level out the wood with the putty knife. So I'm just going to take this and go along, fill in the gaps, then I'm going to do one more final sanding. Down and then it'll be ready for painting once the rest of the wall is complete. As you can see, I have taken out the miter box and I am covered in paint, but I'm going to be, um, I've got the wood clamped to the miter box and I'm going to be taking and angling all of the boards. They're um, going to be angled like this. That way, whenever they come down to my existing baseboard, then they will kind of lead into the baseboard at an angle. That way I don't have to take up all of that nice woodwork that I already have put down. Um, so we're going to go ahead and finish up doing all of these with the miter box. And if you happen to have the same one, I'm using the first one that angles like this and um, I'm going to be making all those cuts. As you can see, I've taken and I've mitered the ends of each of these one by twos. And the purpose of doing this is to be able to keep the baseboard that I have now. And this is actually just going to make a nice angled segue into the current baseboard that I have. As I'm down to the last board, I've decided to go with a 14 inch gap between each one. And basically all I'm doing is leveling up and squaring off this last board. And to do that, all I'm doing is grabbing my level and I put liquid nails on the back. So you do kind of have to work fairly quickly, but not too fast. And I'm just going to put the level up beside it, and I think you can see right here, I'm just going to make sure it's level on a couple of different angles. I'm going to test it at the top and make sure that the top board is level. 
And I'm gonna test it on the bottom and make sure that the bottom is level. What it's left to do is to fill in the holes from the brad nails that have gone in. I have backed each of these wood pieces with liquid nails and then I'm just gonna finish with a final one or two coats of paint depending on how um, you know depending on how many coats it takes to make it a solid color and then I'm gonna go around with my caulking and I had a couple of things I wanted to point out that you might run into when you're completing this project um, I have some issues I do like to allow the caulking to actually cure um, and you can see right here the reason why I like to let it cure for a little while is because in some places you may not have used enough or you may get some cracking just based on the wall kind of being uneven and this is what I was talking about when your walls are uneven you can run a thick bead of caulking to make up the distance between your your top board as well as your your wall to kind of level that out. But that is something I wanted to show you. It's kind of important to fully allow your caulking to dry before you even try to paint it because you might wind up with things like cracking. Another thing I wanted to tell you as well is if there are small spaces like that don't have room for the actual batten board, you can use the wood and just leave those spaces white. Like you can see I've had these, these corners and another thing too is if you run up into an existing kind of like a wall board or something um, and this still needs to be coughed right here but you can actually do that same miter at a 45 degree angle and it can back into or basically wedge into the area behind that without having to tear it out or worry about any fancy cuts and visually I mean it still looks really nice and it has a clean finish whenever you look at it and another thing as well if you are running up into an existing door I mean I guess if you wanted to you could miter kind of into it but I personally think it looks fun like that I just made sure to sand the edges really good so it kind of rounded into the door a little bit with the primer coat it makes it really easy to tell if there are any spaces that need to be sanded a little bit more but I'm gonna go ahead and um, finish that and also wanted to show you too I did caulk around all of the boards now I personally didn't bother doing the underside because I know some people do but I didn't really feel it was necessary all right everyone I'm back and this is the completed wall I think you can see now that everything's painted um, how the the batten board turned out it wraps all the way around the room and again the places that did not have room for a board spacing on these walls I actually just did the batten board finish minus the actual boards and painted them white you can see how everything transitions nicely I'll get kind of close and you can see of course like I said I caulked individual panels and all of the woodwork um, and of course down at the bottom you see that transition from the one by twos into the um, decorative molding at the bottom and I think it still looks nice without having to remove that at all and the trim work comes around like this um, of course I'll link all the information in the info bar below in case you're curious about what colors I used or um, maybe what you might need to complete the project alright guys I hope this inspired you in some way and was helpful in some way see you next time bye